Hello, lady, uh, uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to bring you pretty much my Viking season two finale entitled The Lord's Prayer. You know, and it's uh, it's ironic how King Horik, pretty much the fashion in which King Horik rose to power and the fashion which he pretty much fell in power is, you know, so fucking um, similar. I can remember from Viking season one, episode eight, until sacrifice, Ragnar mentioned the fact that King Horik rose to power by killing all six of his uncles who were responsible for it, not only his father's death, but his mother's death, and his sister's deaths, and his brother's deaths. And just the way he gets annihilated, and all his male like line gets annihilated, with the exception of one, Erlander, is just ironic as fuck. But yeah, so pretty much this episode begins with Floki um, sleeping on the docks. Helga has just came off the boat, whatever, she just gave birth to their daughter, and Floki doesn't want any part about it, you know. He's afraid about being a bad father. He gives her a name which I cannot pronounce. Apparently, Helga said the way she went about, it, she said like it was a it represented like a bad uh, Norse goddess or something. But Floki said no, she was a great giantess. He pretty much tells Helga leave, you know, and and don't and don't return. So yeah, we have Floki pretty much trying to get in horse good graces. And besides that, we have Horik's family coming along. And Horik's wife is also, much like Lagatha, a famous shield maiden in her own right. I think her name is Thornhill or something to that effect. So Thornhill pretty much acts as Lagatha. No, no, she, no, she speaks to Lagatha. No, 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 you're right. <laughs> I was right. She asked Lagatha, is it true, Lagatha, that you killed your husband? And she was all like, yeah, he invaded me. So I did what I had to do, you know, and they just laughed about it. What was interesting about the assembly meeting, you have King Horik saying how he sees Ragnar and Earl Ixtad as equals, and he understands how this enterprise, this little joint rule between them, or like joint, you know, association, you know, will help the future of their people and all that good shit, you know. I swear to God, this must be like the 10th time which this dude went back and forth from pretty much saying, oh, we're not equal? Oh, now we're fucking equal. Like, come on. Now. Even Ragnar at this point, he's just drinking. He's like so like, like he's not even feeling it. He's, he's just like drinking it. He's like no emotion at all. So yeah, but there was one thing about it that was kind of interesting when she said, as you have so many sons, I have so many daughters, you know? And I didn't, I kind of took that, you know, as, probably as a, as a shot at Ragnar's dead daughter, Gita, but maybe I could be wrong. Maybe he was actually being genuine, you know, for a little. But yeah, so, like mentioned before, you have, um, I believe, Bjorn spoke with, fuck, what's her name? Porin, and talking about her being a free woman now. She was saying that she has options now. And then Bjorn kind of took that, you know, to offense. He's all like, well, there's other women, you know. She's like, yeah, there's your first mistake. And pretty much since I didn't really give a shit about this storyline, I'm just going to cut to the chase. They had their little teen, little bum, boom, boom, boom. You know, they they fought and shit. You know, she wanted him. She wanted him to take her like serious as a warrior. He punched her in the face. She was like a little bit surprised. He's like, I'm sorry. Then she started to fight him, fuck him up, and they got all hot and steamy. Pretty much like I am right now. God, damn, hot as a motherfucker. But yeah, you know. And it's ironic because Floki's watching the whole thing. It's fucking creepy shit. He's like literally hiding behind, you know, the little grasses and shit, just watching. But yeah, so Floki, he, um, he's in the mountains, whatever, fields. And he's picking off these mushrooms, smelling the good ones and the bad ones. And he gives Rolo one of these magic mushrooms after he tells Siggy to leave. You know, because she's, she's been tending to Rolo like... Ever since his injury, his broken leg and shit. Probably his ribs as well. Considering he had like a 1,200 pound ass horse go all over his body. But yeah. So Floki's all speaking to Rolo. You know, once Rolo, you put me in the, in the bed. In a similar position, whatever. So pretty much he forces Rolo to eat it. Then he pumps on the chest. And that's his typical Floki shit. <laughs> Gotta love Floki. So yeah. Um, then we have this big ass feast. Everyone's getting all drunk and fucked up and shit. Yeah, Floki's saying to Atherston, it's your fault Rolo's going to die. You betrayed the gods, you know, and all that shit. And Atherston's fucked up, you know. He's already fucked up. Now he's all creeped out, you know. And what else? You have 
Floki speaking to Torsten saying, those girls don't love you, bro. They just love you because of the size of your pouch, nothing more. Torsten's like, yeah, I know, bro, but these girls make me happy because I'm about to fuck them. So, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, besides that, you have Floki speaking with King Horik saying, King Hor no, King Horik says, I'm sorry, Floki. You know, I want to trust you, but you have to prove something. You have to prove it to me. Kill someone important. So Floki's looking around. He's seeing Aslog. He sees uh, Athelstan. He sees Ragnar. You know, he's drinking too. So, good combination. Oh, what, ha what else happened in this scene? You have um, Siggy, I believe. Yeah, I believe she asks King Hork what, you know, pretty much what she's going to do. And all he, t and he tells her, all you need to know is um, my wife's here and my family's here. Bye-bye, bitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> Harlot. So, yeah. So, the next scene, which is really awesome, you have... Pretty much the hangover day, recovery day. The boys are pretty much throwing coin, you know, into the basket, into the little basket, the equivalent of the Marty basketball, I guess you can say. Um, and yeah, you have this really beautiful shot scene, especially with the music. You have King Hork just looking at each and every one of the individuals, trying to figure out which one is most important to kill. You know, which one, you know what I mean, all that stuff. And it was just amazing. He just like, the music was just awesome. You have Floki just robbing Athelstan of getting the coin and the basket. Everyone's like, what? What the fuck? Floki's like, Psh. you know? And, um, yeah. I believe the next scene after that, Floki has his sword. He's near the water. And King Horus is like, do you know who you're going to kill? Floki's like, yes, I know who I'm going to kill. And Floki turns around. Horus is okay. Horus is like, damn near halfway gone. He's like, oh, that's all you know, bro. <laughs> you know? Next thing that happens pretty much, you know... There's yet another feast, and Floki tells young Ubi that um to give these magic, you know, these herbs to Torstein, and that if he tells anyone that there was this story about how the gods tied Loki amongst three sharp, you know, rocks, and they tied him up, and venom cut drip on his head for all eternity. So obviously that scared the fucking boy, and he gave the herb to Torstein. Next scene, Torsi has all fucking, like, alcoholic, you no know, vomit on his face. And apparently he's fucking dead. And Bjorn is beside himself saying, whoever did this, Torsi is going to pay. And then you have Floki concurring and shit. And then after this scene, you have King Hork saying, you proved yourself well, Floki. Now, you know, King, and then Floki's like, okay, who do you want, who else do you want me to kill, whatever. King Hork's like, we have to kill all of them. All of them. All that family. Ragnar, Lagatha, Aslog, the boys, Bjorn, all of them. Anyone associated with them. Because if one member of that family survives, it'll be the end. You know what I mean? Of his line, whatever. And then, I believe Floki mentioned, what about Bjorn? And King Horus said, oh, Ironside. He'll be a tough one to kill. You're going to have to figure out how to kill him. And that's the funniest thing about fucking Horik. It seemed like the most difficult task he always has other motherfuckers to do for himself instead of him doing it himself. You know what I mean? Other, other fuckers doing it for him instead of him doing it for himself. When it came to y'all Borg, Ragnar had to fucking try to settle that shit. That did not work out. When it comes to telling y'all Borg in season two, oh, I don't want to sell. I don't want to sell y'all Borg. I don't trust him. Can you do this, Ragnar? That's one that fucking aggravates the shit at me about King Horik. You know what I mean? He always want other people to do his shit. And just the way he thinks sometimes, I even wonder, how the fuck did he even <laughs> send the king? Because the way he thinks, he just kind of thinks like a lesser version of Rolo. He never thinks, you know what I mean? He never thinks like, ugh. But yeah, here's part, this is part one of my review of Viking Season 2, Episode 10, the season finale, entitled The Lord's Prayer. And I'm going to end this shit with Part 2. And hopefully be a lot less sweat on my face. Adios.